Well, we're going to continue working on Sasquatch. So if you saw the last video, you know that I was out uh, exploring and ended up with a fuel pump failure. Now, if you want to see what I went through, all the diagnostics I went through to uh, figure out what was wrong with the van, why it wouldn't start, uh, and what made me believe that it is the fuel pump, you can check out my last video. But basically, I did check the fuel pump relay, uh, check the um, fuse, we, I also checked the fuel disconnect switch. There's a little inertia switch. If the van hits something too hard, sometimes that can get popped. Uh, that will shut off power to the fuel pump. Uh, there's also a ground wire that can cause some problems. And so we, I went through, checked voltages. Everything seemed to be fine. <laughs> and in a nutshell, I actually got the van to start again by taking a hammer and smacking the fuel tank several times and was able to finally get the fuel pressure up. I do have a fuel pressure gauge. That's something that doesn't come stock in the van. If you don't have one, I highly recommend get, putting one in because it's uh, super handy and has helped me out a lot. But anyways, we're in the shop now. We've got all the parts that we think we need. And so we're just gonna run through real quick in this video, how to drop the tank and change out the fuel pump. All right, so the first thing we're doing is just working on getting the straps free. So these two of these straps that you can see right here and he's just got, there's a nut and a thread just on one side. So you just unbolt the one side, the strap will drop down and out of the way. So we're obviously taking the tank and dropping it down. Now I saw a lot of YouTube videos. I uh, kind of watched a bunch of them last night and a lot of people didn't want to do this. So they just cut a hole in the floor of their van to get to where the uh, fuel pump goes down in. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I don't think that's a great plan. I'd much rather just do it the right way. Uh, taking the straps off, it's a little bit of a pain. If you got a couple floor jacks, um, I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal to drop the tank. Now, obviously it would be much easier if the tank wasn't full of fuel. Mine's probably sitting at about a half or more full of fuel. Uh, so that's not ideal. Um, so I would recommend trying to get all your fuel out if you can. In our situation, we really don't have a place to store all the fuel, so it's just gonna stay in the tank. All right, so Aaron's getting the last strap out of the van. There's two of these straps that hold the tank up. On the one side that he was working on, you can see that you just have a thread. Sorry, that's not focusing. There we go. Uh, you got a thread and a nut, and you just undo that, and then this drops out. And then to get the other side out, you can see it's just a T. See if I can get that to focus. That you just twist the whole strap and it comes out of the slot. As of right now, uh, both straps are off. You can see the other one over there. We're holding the fuel tank up with a couple of uh, floor jacks just to make sure it doesn't fall down. We'll start lowering it down a little bit to get to the top of the tank where all the connections are. Uh, one of the other things that we'll need to take off here in a minute is these. This is your filler hose coming in. This is your breather hose. Both of these will need to be just undone. It's just regular hose clamps. And then that way they can just slide off and then we can pull the tank down. It's just that easy. It's super simple, Aaron. Super simple. Let's let it in. So we got uh, the new pump here, and then I went ahead, and even though the relay seemed to be good, I went ahead and picked up another relay. Also got another 30 amp fuse here, just in case um, we accidentally blew one while we were wiring this up. But also picked up this little tool set here. This is how you get the Ford fuel lines off. There's actually lots of different revisions of these tools, and I actually it sucks because I have a complete set back at the shop, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one in the van from now on. All right, so right now we're still trying to get, we got the tank down low enough and we're trying to get the fuel lines off. We're having a little bit of challenge. Like I said, we're using these tools that we got that are supposed to release the little springs that lock the fuel lines in place, but the fuel lines are feeling a little bit seized on there. They're not wanting to turn or move much. So trying to get that spring to release and then get the fuel line to pop off is proving to be a little bit more challenging than it really should be. It turns out whoever put the fuel line on last had bent one of the little spring tabs, which made it so that the tool couldn't shove all the way in and release the other springs. Once we did eventually get it off, Aaron was able to bend the tab back so we should not have this problem in the future. 
Okay, so another thing to note, on each side of the fuel tank you got some breather tubes here that you'll have to pull off if you want to pull the tank all the way out. Aaron is actually working on getting the other one which is being somewhat problematic but we almost got him off. We got the um, tank all the way out. So this was the breathers that we were having a little bit of problem with. You can see that they are just rubber hoses. One of these goes to a T on the frame rail. There's one on each side here. You see the two hoses. Then you got the fill neck, your breather tube for your fill neck. Uh, the, here's your wiring to the van. Then you have your line to the uh, motor. Sorry, here, let me get pointed here. You got the line to the motor, and then you got your return line. What we gotta do now is this spins and comes out, but as you can see first, we really need to kind of clean up this tank a little bit. Alright guys, well we're still working on cleaning up the tank. Sorry if this video seems extremely rushed, but this is the same day actually that we brought the van that I basically went across the mountain pass, had it towed by Casey. It's all same day. Two videos, but same day. So we're kind of pushing because Aaron's trying to help me get this thing done so we can get back on the road. Because of course the van is my house, so it's always inconvenient when it's down. Hello. Well, we're working on it. He's uh, working on it actually. We're getting ready to pull. We got the tank completely out at this point, and he's getting ready to um, pull the old fuel pump out right as we speak. So here's another potential problem. What could have been going on? So if you guys see here, this is the sock that goes at the bottom of the. See if I'm put out there. So it goes at the bottom of the fuel pump so that it basically filters a little bit before it goes to the pump. And you can see just how grody this one is. So this might have been why beating the bottom of the tank made the thing work again. I don't know, it might have just loosened up things enough that it allowed uh, more fuel to flow, but not really sure. Don't really care at this point. Just happy that it did work and got me down the road. Different design going on here. Same but different. Same but different. So this one's they're adjustable-ish. You just sit on the bottom and press against it. Yeah. Did that come? Well, now that makes me wonder. There's another little. Yeah. There's oh, okay. Another there's a little pigtail in there. Okay. So, so that's yeah. nice. We got a new new connector there. All right, so here's our new pump. You can see there's a little bit of difference in this because again, this is an aftermarket pump, uh, but you got your little sock here, you got your pump. Uh, again, your little paddle for letting you know your fuel. fuel. Uh, the one thing that I noticed is that they did come with a different connector uh, than the stock connector, but they give you a little uh, pigtail to put on the other side. So we got the new pump in. Now it's just a matter of shoving it back up in place. As well, my camera died, so I just put a camera down on the ground, and you guys saw a time lapse of us getting the tank in. Actually, I mean, we got it done fast. I don't think we did it probably the most effective. <laughs> no crying. <laughs> no crying. So, anyways, let's see if this van starts. That that will, I guess, before we start um, celebrating, we should actually see if the van starts. Let's see if we have fuel pressure. Oh, look at all of that fuel pressure. Woo! All right, super simple. Alright 
guys. Well, we are done. Aaron has helped me out again. And remember, he's going to be helping me out with this. So if you don't know what this is about, you'll need to check. Well, you don't need to check any videos. We're putting in a six speed. Putting in a six speed. That's the next fun project. Hopefully it'll be as super simple as this. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. So, all right, guys. It's getting late. Aaron's uh, up past his bedtime. I'm up past my bedtime. But, yeah, this has been a great day. I mean, it's never a great day to have a breakdown. But considering the fact that I was 100 plus miles away this morning with a broke down van on the side of the road and through great people helping me out, like Casey Liddell, who got me here. Aaron helped me out and get it switched out. We're back on the road by the end of the day, and we'll be heading back to the mountains tomorrow. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry, it wasn't probably very informative because we were in a hurry, but uh, just getting stuff done. But anyways, if you did like the video, give it a like. If you got any comments or questions, leave those down below, and we'll see you guys again outside.